What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna go through some little tips, tricks, and hidden features of the Sony A7 Mark III. Let's go. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the entire menu system because I'm sure that there's probably other videos on YouTube that do that already. Uh, plus the fact you guys could just look at the menu yourselves if you want to. This is more specifically about how I've set the camera up and little functions and features that I've found on the camera that help me out day-to-day -day shooting. So with that said, let's take a look. Okay, the first one we've got on this list is this focus magnifier and I've got this set on my center button. To set this up, go into the menu, go to the purple folder and go across to page eight of nine then go to the custom key for photo. Go across to page two, go down one, center button, focus magnifier. Okay, so what this allows you to do is to punch in to nail focus, but what's really great about this is you can use autofocus while in this mode, which is pretty cool. All right, the second one on this list is spot metering linked to AF point. Okay, to set this up, it's in two parts. Firstly, go into the red folder, page 10, 14, go to spot metering point and select focus point link. After you've done that, go to page nine of 14, go down to metering mode and select spot. I prefer to use large spot metering mode. So once you've done that, you'll see a circle around the AF point that you've selected. This is your spot metering area. But what's really cool is when you move your AF point, the metering circle will move as well. So if you select a dark area or a light area in the frame, the exposure will compensate because it's metering from within that circle. Pretty cool. Okay, this one's a strange one, but bear with me on this. Creative styles even in RAW. To set this up, go to the red folder, page 12 or 14, and go down to Creative Style. I've selected Vivid, but I've modified the contrast and saturation to zeros, but increase the sharpness to plus three. Then if you take a picture and go to review it, you'll notice that it's sharper than without the Creative Style. This only affects photos going forward and does not apply any effect to the raw file. It's just for reviewing pictures on the back of the screen. Priority in Auto White Balance. To set this up, we're in the red folder, page 12 or 14, go down to priority set in AWB. Once you select it, you'll be presented with three options, standard, ambience, or white. Standard is a balance between the two, ambient prioritizes the color tone of the light source, and white prioritizes a reproduction of whites. With my limited time with this camera so far, I seem to prefer prioritizing whites, but that's just me. Have a play around and see what works for you. Okay, talking of white balance, the next one is auto white balance adjust. To set this up, we're in the red folder again, page 12 or 14, select white balance. Clicking on it will give you the ability to select all the different white balances, which is fair enough. However, going up to auto white balance and clicking right, you'll be presented with a little color graph. This gives you the ability to add a certain emphasis even in auto white balance. I seem to prefer AB setting set to 0.5 and GM setting set to 0.5. This gives a very slight hint of reds in the auto white balance setting. Okay, this next one's one of my favorites, ISO auto minimum shutter speed. To set this up, dive into the menu, folder one, page nine of 14, go down to auto ISO min SS. Selecting this option, you'll be presented with a bunch of shutter speeds. The shutter speed you select will be the minimum shutter speed the camera selects before it starts bumping ISO. Okay, this one's just kind of handy when reviewing photos, enlarge, initial, magnification. To set this up, go to the review folder, page two of three, and go down to enlarge, init, mag. You can either select standard magnification or previous magnification. If you select previous magnification, it remembers the magnification that you used last time you reviewed a photo. And this one's a little bit of a handy tip as well. While punched into a photo, you can use a thumb wheel on the back to navigate between shots whilst maintaining the current zoom level. Want to see what the buffer's like mid-burst? This one's for you, Cont Shoot Length. To set this up, we're diving into the menu, folder two, page seven of nine. Go to Cont Shoot Length and select Shoot Only Display. What this does is adds a bar to the left-hand side of the screen as soon as the camera focuses. And as soon as you start taking pictures in a burst, that bar will start decreasing, indicating how many shots you have left before the buffer runs out. Pretty handy. Okay, and lastly, this one's probably the most advanced one on this list, Exposure Standard Adjust. To set this up, we're back in the red folder, page 10 of 14, go down to Exposure Standard Adjust. The camera throws a warning sign at you, but just click OK. It then displays a list of metering modes with the option of adjusting auto exposure for each. This is the equivalent of using exposure compensation but fixing the compensation for each metering mode. 
For the style of editing I do, I almost always find myself increasing exposure in post. So, because of this, I've set my exposure adjust to 2 sixths of a stop higher than the camera's standard auto exposure, resulting in a brighter, but potentially overexposed, photo straight out of camera. Oh, well, there you go guys. Of course, everything that I've just said is obviously available in the manual anyway, and even if you don't have the camera, uh, maybe if you like pre-ordered it or if you're on the fence about buying it, um, you can still you can download this online anyway. So um, yeah, if you want to take a look at any other functions, there's so much menu to go through, and I'm not going to do one of those videos as like an hour long um, going through the entire menu system. You guys can just find this out yourselves if you download this online. Okay, before I wrap this video up, I know a lot of you have been commenting saying that you want to see the part two of my Sigma MC11 test. Rest assured it is coming, it's just the weather in England has been pretty crappy over the last few days. Um, and trying to find a model that's willing to, uh, to stand out in the rain and for me to take pictures of them for like an hour is pretty hard to come by. But yeah, rest assured it's coming. I'm going to make sure to do um, IAF tests and at low light abilities uh, on the Canon Sigma lenses, of course, as well as uh, doing it on the native glass as well. So yeah, it's definitely coming. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then give it a, um, a like and do a subscribe thing if you want to do that. Um, comment below um, for anything else you want to see about this camera. Um, I try to respond to every single comment I get. With that being said, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!